Since jQuery Mobile is built on top of jQuery, it has access to all the methods, including the AJAX functions. But since we are building apps for mobile devices, there are some additional rules that we should follow. Communication drains power. The biggest draws of power on most mobile devices are the display and the radio. If every time users visit your site their batteries are drained, they will stop visiting your site. Choose Chunky over Chatty. By Chunky, we mean to get all the data you need in one call, as opposed to making many calls, each getting only part. If possible, try to combine calls on the server side so that your app can get all the data it needs in one shot. Choose JSON over XML. JSON is a much more efficient protocol than XML. Lazy load data. Wait until the user needs data to load it. This is especially true of lists. Don't load a list of 100 items if the user can only see 10 at a time. Try loading, say, 20 items. If the user scrolls past the first 10, then load another 20. JSONP or JSON with padding is a complement to the base JSON data format. It provides a method to request data from a server in a different domain, something prohibited by typical web browsers because of the same origin policy. Template Engines A template engine is software that is designed to process web templates and content information to produce output web documents. My own definition is that a template engine allows for the creation of HTML markup in an automated fashion by combining. My own definition is that a template engine allows for the creation of HTML markup in an automated fashion by combining dynamic data with a static template. It does this without putting the markup in the JavaScript. Here are a few of the many freely available JavaScript template engines around, but the one I like to use is Underscore, mainly because in addition to its template engine, it has over 60 other functions all in a plugin, which is only 4K when minified in gzipped. There are two parts to templates. First, there is the markup. There are no HTML standards governing template, but here is how we make them. In the head section of the markup, we create a script tag. Give it an ID. Then, give it a type of text slash template. This is not an official MIME type, but by the rules of HTML, browsers ignore any attribute they don't recognize. Plus, by putting the template in a script tag, in the head section, we guarantee that the browser won't try to render it. Next, we actually write our template code. So here, we're going to define an li. Templates can contain JavaScript to enable them to do fairly complex rendering, but we'll create a fairly simple one, which will only contain a few variables. Variables in the template look like this. Uh, hold on first, let's create our image. They begin with an angle bracket and a percent sign then an equals, and then we say here what's the name of the property of the object that's going to get passed to the template that we want to render. In this case, since it's coming from Twitter, we want to render 
the profile underscore image underscore URL. Anything that is not in a variable in the template is going to be rendered verbatim. So the li tag above is going to be rendered exactly as we wrote it. And all the attributes of this image tag are going to be rendered exactly the way that we wrote it. So we give our image some classes. And we even give it an alt tag. And the alt tag will also be defined by a variable. This time equals text. Then we close off our image. Then we create a few span tags. And in the span tags, we are also going to put some variables. Once again, we're going to do the text, close our span tag, and copy these two lines. On the second line, we're going to create the username who created the tweet. And then on the final line, we're going to put how long ago this tweet was created in typical Twitter fashion. And that's all there is to our template. Now let's actually get some data. In the load method of our tweet object, we're going to create all of our data or gather all the data from Twitter. the very first thing that we need to do is we need to tell the Ajax call where it's getting its data from. In this case it's going to come from Twitter and very specifically Twitter's search engine. At the end of the URL, we need to include the search term that the user typed in on the line. Next, we're going to say what type of HTTP call we're going to make. And in this case, we're going to make a GET call. Then we're going to tell the server which kind of data we'd like to get back. And this time, we want to get JSONP. Finally, we're going to define our success function. Oh, that's why that's green. Let me fix that. So we define a success function, which is going to receive data from Twitter. In this case, it's going to receive data, a text status, and the XHR object. And then following the success object, we're going to have our error object. And we'll declare its function inline as well. So that just in case we receive an error, we can display that error message to the user. do anything fancy here, we'll just throw up an alert. Now let's go back and fill out our success object. We're going to need a few variables. We're going to use i as our loop counter. 
tweet to hold an individual tweet from Twitter and compile which is going to have the compiled version of our template once the template engine is through rendering it. One piece of housekeeping that we need to do before we display the new tweets is that we need to go through and clear out all of the old markup that's currently holding tweets if there are previous tweets and so we're going to clear them all out using a little bit of jQuery. So we're going to find our tweet class and remove them all. In our for loop, data dot results will hold the, all of the tweets that were returned from Twitter. So we're going to loop through its length number of times. Then we're going to extract the tweets one by one. Plus, we're going to take advantage of a little bit of JavaScript hocus pocus. In the data that comes back from Twitter, there is no time ago property. But since we want to render this out with our template engine, we can simply create it on the fly. Since anytime you use a dot notation on a JavaScript property, if that property doesn't exist, it gets created. Make a call to our time ago method and pass it the time that this tweet was created so that it can tell us in a more Twitter-like fashion as opposed to how many milliseconds ago it was created. Then we use underscore template engine to render our template. And we pass the template engine the current tweet that we're working with. So all of its data is going to be extracted and put into the template, which is going to be compiled and put in the variable compiled. Then we use the jQuery append to method to append the compiled tweet to the browser. Now one extra thing that we need to do is that anytime you modify a list view and these tweets are being captured in a list view, you need to let jQuery mobile know that you've modified the list. In order to do that, we call the refresh property of the list view. There. Now we save. Go back to the index page and then run. Type in a term. And we had a little bit of a problem here. Let's see what we did wrong. Take a look at the inspector. Looks like we did not close off the string holding our image tag source in the template. images, we have the text, we don't have the time ago. We 
because we made the same error twice. Okay, now we can see everything except for our time ago. No, I'm not sure why that's not up there. Let's take a real quick look and see if we can fix that. Once again, just a little bit of sloppy writing. Forgot to put an underscore in there. And now we see everything. We have our tweets. We have the actual message of the tweet. We have how long ago this tweet happened. We have the user that sent it. And that's how you combine a jQuery Ajax with the underscore template engine to do rendering in JavaScript in a jQuery mobile application. So that's how you combine the jQuery Ajax method with the underscore template engine to render Ajax in a jQuery mobile application.